mayor. I'm praying to God. I'm trying to do many things at once. Who are these developers? Have you ever seen one live? They gotta live in Westchester. Not in Queens or in Bed-Stuy. When one of them knocks on your door, the apocalypse is here. We're gentrified. It's they are the utopias that we have in hand, our neighborhood. Where the con of consumerism is that heaven is over there. It's beyond. You have to transcend something to get to your utopia. Uh, I was raised by Dutch Calvinists in the Midwest and, and have a uh, special intimacy for predestination. You know, I was one of those kids, I was seven years old and I was looking up into the Sunday school teacher's eyes as he told me, yes, you could be burning in the lake of hellfire just, just because God said so. If somebody comes in, hi, how are you this afternoon? If somebody comes in and, and you're seven years old and you're full of this wonder at the night sky and you're, you're open and you're wondering about life and a, a predestinator comes in and hits you with this abusive kind of magic surrealism, uh, the lake of hellfire burning all the time because some silent distant man says so. Uh, it, it, it screws up your wonder so bad that you can't be artistic. Sidney Lanier came to one of my plays. I would, I would produce my own plays once a year in the, uh, in Fort Mason, in my theater. And this is in the early 90s. And uh, I had this, uh, this elegant older man explained to me that uh, I shouldn't be afraid of Christianity. I should be aware of how powerful biblical narratives are in, in society. And after working with him for mm, maybe four or five years, reading a book every week, I, I was at the end of that process standing in front of the Disney store in Times Square preaching. Yet after 9-11 is when I became a pastor and not so much just a political parody, religious commentary, arty, irony, but rather a pastor with a church. And that is when that was a fork in the road for us. We never went back to theater after that, but that was it. And we we recognized that we'd evolved already into something much different. All right now. Amen. And then I said, Bill, you have a uh, the quality of a preacher. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, he was very interested in social matters, but. Uh, so I said, why not, you know, why not just think of some of your things as sermons? And then he got to thinking about that, and he kind of liked the idea, so he got himself a collar and a shirt and, <laughs> and began to uh, present his things as Reverend, uh, as, uh, Reverend Billy. Okay. But here in the Church of Stop Shopping, what we forgive each other in advance ahead of time. Amen? Is that right, children? <laughs> oh, that... It's great when That's emerging great. out of our culture, these original uh, you know, uh, and, uh, and he is one of them, and uh, part of that performance artist uh, aspect of our culture, which I always... Uh, you know, it's uh, it's our it's it's our uh, it's our it's our name for uh, for the what used to be called the prophet. Yeah. And the prophet in Hebrew just means 
He came for, you know, and it uh, doesn't have any religious meaning about it, really. It's just speaking for. So, Jersey Bill does that. <laughs> Breathe.